Hey everyone, this is Pastor Denise. How you doing? Happy Sunday to everybody. We had our service Saturday night. It was awesome. We're praying for people. Hallelujah. You know, I was thinking about it today and I was thinking about Esther. I was thinking about Esther and how Esther found favor with the king. And she had favor with the king because of her attitude and her actions. Praise God. We can have favor with the king of glory. Jesus found favor with God and with man. You and I can have favor. And that favor is so important. You know, favor comes through uh, off, often through honoring people properly. Honoring people properly. Praise God. When we honor people, God shows up. God's in the middle of it. When we honor people, He shows up. Amen. I think that's a thing that I see that's really lacking in... Um, lacking in the body of Christ sometimes is the lack of honor for people and um, something we need to take a look at honor produces favor honoring who God sets in place in the ministry you're honoring God who sent them simple fact so it's 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 really cool that if you recognize that you can honor those set in authority, you will be honoring God, and favor just manifests. And and, and you honor, you know, there's two types of honor. Let me talk about honor for a minute. There's honor that comes from duty. You know, you honor the prime minister. You honor those in authority. That's what we do. But when you honor people out of love. That's when things change. That's when things are different. And um, God knows. So when you honor um, people in authority, in churches, leaders in churches, that honor that you show them through love, God knows. God knows. Now, I'm not saying we're none of us are perfect. I mean, we all have our moments. But when when the hard attitude, if that's the, the base of honor is there, God shows up. God sees. God understands. So uh, if you're going through something right now, don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you know to do and trusting the Lord. But, you know, um, Esther, Esther uh, re- received favor from God through the king and uh, saved her people. She made a decree that saved a nation that they were allowed to protect themselves. She released a decree that the Jewish nation could protect themselves um, against a, a decree that had earlier been made. When a decree is released by a king, it can't be reversed. So I, I want you to recognize that you've been made a king and a priest. I'm going somewhere here. So we're seeing honor begats favor hallelujah we have favor with the king of glory favor with man but we need to make decrees like Esther did got permission because of favor and you're highly favored because you belong to Jesus Christ it is by his blood that it's done but still in that as we honor God he sees he sees what we do and as we are we're honoring people and we're making decrees. Who knows? Who knows what your prayers and decrees are doing? You know, as you write your Esther was told to write down her decree, and it'll get the the it'll get the king's signet ring on it, and it'll go through a whole nation. I believe you are called by God to release decrees that are in alignment with the kingdom of God, with godly principles of Jesus Christ. Let's be clear. And as you release these godly decrees over your land, over your people, over your family, over your life, things are going to change. 
they have to change, especially if they're in accordance with God's word, if they include God's word, because God's word cannot be altered, cannot be changed. It must produce that which it is, has to. The devil will stop you, will try to stop you. Let me change that. I, I change that up. We'll try to stop you from decreeing God's word, from showing up to decree God's word, for being bold, for standing on God's word in corporate settings and private settings. We need to intimidate the devil, not allow him to intimidate us in any way, shape, or form. Hallelujah. When you do that, you're taking dominion in the earth. In Psalm 8, we've been given dominion over the works of God's fingers. He says, decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Release a word and it shall come to pass. The key is in believing and decreeing and even writing it down. I encourage you to write down a decree um, uh, that is in alignment with God's word. And watch the power in that. Because when you're being intentional about writing it down, you're being intentional about thinking about it, you're being intentional in doing your godly duty as a king and a priest unto God. And when you decree God's word in the earth, tremendous change happens. You cannot alter God's word. Can't do it. You can't change it. Nothing can. I think that's good news. I think we need to recognize that. Well, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you all online. It's a strong word. But there's some Esthers out there who need to start decreeing, who need to start decreeing God's word with boldness, loudness, with tenacity, with with courage and strength. Hallelujah. Yeah, we can't be weak need about anything around here. Right? We need to stand bold as a lion. Decree God's word in our nations. Don't stop decreeing God's word. You can do it daily. Daniel played, prayed three times a day. That's pretty good. He's an awesome prophet. Why not us? Why not more? You know, um, I take breaks during my day to think about Jesus and think about the work I'm doing. It's important we do that. But take the same time to decree as well to decree God's word, to speak God's word, to um, release God's word. See, that's a big thing. You know, we, we hear all the principles. We go to the conferences. We go to the conferences. We have a Holy Ghost good time. But we're not decreeing and declaring and releasing God's word in our life and in our home. And that's what needs to transpire. That need, that's what needs to really happen, is that we release God's word in the earth. Hallelujah. And um, if we don't do it, nothing's going to change. In fact, it'll probably get worse. I'm not decreeing that, but that's usually the way it goes. Unless somebody else is praying on your behalf that you don't know about. Which is nice. We need that. We really need that. But what we really need to do is get busy, get into the prayer meetings. I was looking at reports that less than 10% of a congregation show up at a prayer meeting. But Jesus said my house would be called a house of prayer for all nations. All nations. All nations. Every nation. We need to start praying more, guys. We need to be exhorting leaders. If you're a leader in a church, you need to start exhorting your people that it's great to show up at the Sunday worship service, but it's very, very vital to pray. And we're all called to decree and to declare. If you're washed in the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, you've been made a pre king and a priest unto God, both. Every man and every woman. It's not the, just the men. It's men and women who have been called to decree and to declare God's word. You've been sanctified, set apart to do this. It's part of your mandate of who you are in Christ. It's who you are in Christ. 
this is not a a request but it is essentially a commandment from God that you know he said he called his house a house of prayer so there needs to be prayer and if we're not praying and we think we can do it without God we're in pride it's just pride you don't think you need God to show up or you're not praying or you prayed once mm, that's good but let's let's do more we need to be decreeing and declaring God's word. We need to be relying and trusting on him. Pride says, oh, I know how to do that. I can do that on my own. Humility says, Lord, help me. Lord, I'm decreeing your word over this situation, over this people, over my nation. Watch God move. Watch God move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a strong word today. Usually, you know, usually I've got something more fun to say. At least I think I do, anyways. But uh, hey, good to see you all online. I appreciate and value you. You know, it's uh, Sunday. I have Saturday night services now. Our church is on Saturday night service. And um, so Sundays is it's different for me, which is fine. I like different, so I can visit some of my friends in different ministries if I want. It's good. But I wanted to share with you today, don't stop decreeing God's word. It, it will not return to you void. It has only the ability to accomplish what it was set to do. If you release the, release the word, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, and consistently release those words, consistently release that truth truth shows up it's just the way it is it can't be altered hallelujah I love it I love it I love it you know I'm getting you think you have a deep understanding of the word and then God drops it even deeper in your heart in a different way and you you gain experience over the years and um being a grandma in my 60s, I'm getting experience in the Word. And when I practice what Jesus said to practice, I have faith and have action towards those things that He has said in His Word. They come to pass. And when I stand on the Word and jump on the Word and shout on the Word and release God's Word for my life or for someone else, I see tremendous results. It's tremendous results. It's the truth. He's given us his word. Now he's saying to us, get out there. Be bold. Do what I've told you to do. Speak boldly. Declare my word. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know. I remember the first time it happened that, that I decreed his word and someone got healed. Or there was a huge uh, financial turnaround in a company because I released a word and God gave me something to do. I went into prayer and I asked for help. Simple things. Asking for help from the Lord is so important. Amen. Humbling ourselves. Coming into agreement with God's word. When God says this is the way it's to go and, and we come into agreement with it, we're not in pride, we're in humility. We're submitting to the word of God. We're bowing to the word. We're yielding to the word. We're responding to the word with grace and honor and humility. So let's honor God by honoring his word. Let's honor God. Let's humble ourselves. When we do that, favor shows up. Great things change. Listen, I'm going to I'm going to go now, but uh just wanted to give you that word on um the word on the word. The word on honor. Honor begats favor, begats um amazing doors open for you. But even as we saw how um Esther honored the king, which produced favor, which produced the ability to release a decree that changed a nation. Let's be wise. 
know that we've been made kings and priests unto God. And we have fa- we are highly favored with Jesus Christ. And as we honor him by honoring his word, by releasing his word, by believing his word, by acting on his word, God will show up huge, big time, powerfully in our lives. Things must change. And I decree right now that they are changing in your life. They're changing. They're changing right now in Jesus' name. I decree in the name of Jesus everything that's out of alignment in your body, in your bank account, in your business, in your work, in your ministry, in your family. In the name of Jesus, I declare, be in alignment now in Jesus' name. Get right. Everything's straighten up right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for each of you online today that God would move in your life with his divine favor, his amazing grace, his amazing grace, and bring you everything that you need. May all your needs be met in the name of Jesus Christ. I release favor and blessing and honor, dominion and might over you now. In Jesus' mighty name. God believes in you and so do I. Amen. God bless you. I should go now. Yeah, this is Denise Adams from Crystal Waters International Ministries. I'm the pastor there. I'm the lead of the ministry. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going out to the nation shortly. God's sending me out again. I had to wait and hear from heaven when it was time to go again. been getting tons of invitations to go. Praise God. But you need to go where God's sending you in the timing and the season. Blessings, Bonnie. God bless you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, get busy. Do the work of the Lord. Let your kindness shine through. Amen. You are highly favored. Speak God's word. Write it out. Even, you know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and go, I don't know what to pray. Don't know what to pray. What do I pray? Have it written down. Have some scriptures of the things that you're standing on. Three main things. I said I was going to go, but I, I, some of you, some of you are pulling on me. Three main things that you want to see changed in your life, and write out the word of God regarding it, so you know God's what God says about it. So you're reminded every day, so you can pick that up every morning and and make three decrees over each thing. You could say if you needed healing in your body, or you want to walk in divine health, you can say in the name of Jesus, by His stripes I was healed. Therefore, I walk in divine health. I thank the Lord, for I put myself in remembrance of his word. He sent forth his word and healed me and delivered me from destruction. I am free from any type and form of destruction. Simple statement like that every morning. Every morning. He's God's word's medicine, he says. It's medicine, it's health, and it's life to all your flesh. Every area of your life. That's good news. So get three things you want to see changed. And I dare you, a double dog dare you, if you uh, take the next six months over those three things and start to cream the word over them, write out three paragraph statements. It has three lines. Each, each paragraph has three statements in it over three things. It's not going to take you long to do. Do some research. Find out the word what God has to say about the subject. Speak it every day and every night before you go to bed. Do it in the morning, do it in the night. And if you feel like doing it more than that, do it. Because God's words, you can't overdose on God's words. You can only get blessed on God's words. So just keep doing it and watch. It has dunamis power in it. It has explosive living power power in God's word to bring about the change you want. But unless you're decreeing God's word, unless you're releasing that word and acting in alignment with the word, if you say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, 
then then you go confessing to everyone, oh, I've got a sore, whatever. You're negating his word. Amen? You can just say, oh, yep, yeah, God's healing. Power is at work in my body. Say that instead. Say that instead. It's the truth. You're decreeing it. Little tips to help you. My gosh. God wants you walking well in a good life. Mm, God loves you so much. Bonnie, God's taking you to new places. There's something on your life that is, uh, he's uh, taking you to new places. That's what I hear. Amen. He's taking you to new places. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Chris, good to see you online. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I feel the prophetic flow <laughs> breaking forth right now. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Bonnie, that's amazing. It's good news. It's good news. I don't know if you're still online. Um, praise the Lord. All right. I'm going to say goodbye for now. I, I, I tried to get offline a few minutes ago, but uh, the anointing hit me in a different area, and some of you were pulling on the Word of God for your life. Amen. All right. I've got to go. Love you dearly. Um, keep decreeing, guys. Write it down. Make it plain. Amen. Because the angels are going to run with the word of God. They're there to not only uh, minister to you, but for you. For you. Some of them are bringing goats. I see goats showing up at someone's place. I don't know. That's what I'm seeing. I think that's Africa. Or, or Indonesia. Goats are coming. Amen. Goats are good. Not goats like sheep and goats, like in the Bible in a sense, but goats for producing, producing wealth. They do a good job. Goat milk, goat cheese, goat meat. All good. All good. All right. All right. I'm going to say bye for now. Love you all dearly. I really do. I really care about you guys. I care about your lives. Yeah. If you're in town, if you're in the Vancouver area, anytime you're in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, I'm Canadian. I'm going to encourage you. Come on out on a Saturday night. God bless you, Kirsty. Saturday night, live with the Holy Ghost, 730 at 4845 Imperial Street in Burnaby. We are... Um, uh, in the One Love Center, I have a Saturday night service. It's a Holy Ghost service. We pray, we decree, I release the words, and uh, Holy Ghost shows up. Amen. Many miracles. God is a God of miracles. Often he gives me a word for the people who, who show up. Praise God. The key is getting out. And uh, a Saturday night is different. It's fun because, you know, if you're, if you're a member of a congregation or a church and you, you're happy there, I'm happy you're happy there. But come on out Saturday night. Let's have some fun in the, uh, have some fun in the Holy Ghost. So many people miss prayer meetings. Oh, let's see. I haven't, every time I try to hang up, it, it's not working. <laughs> we ha would have prayer meetings and they would be so much fun. There would be so much fun. We would laugh in the Spirit. We would see things in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit would move. Angels would show up. I don't know why people don't want to come to prayer meetings. Oh my goodness. They are missing out on so, so much fun. Hey, Brandon. God bless you. There's so much fun. God shows up. The supernatural moves of the Spirit of God show up when you get in the presence of God. I like Saturday nights because people who come on Saturday nights are hungry. Hungry for a move of the Spirit. 
and um, are needing help. Or both. And that's good because God loves to help his people. So, yeah, Saturday nights in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. Hallelujah. And uh, watch what God will do. He will change everything for you. It's his job. He loves to do that. Listen, I got to run. Keep saying that. I'll see you soon. God bless.